What are the stages of a lawsuit? You've got pre-suit. You've got pleadings. You've got discovery. You've got pre-trial motions. You've got trial. And you've got post-trial. We'll talk about each one in turn. I'm Mark Lida from Lida Law Firm. Let's get to work. So if we're talking about the phases of a lawsuit, the first thing you really have to think about is pre-lawsuit. And often the objective of the pre-lawsuit phase is to avoid a lawsuit. Even though I am a litigator, meaning a trial lawyer, I always advise people if there's a way to avoid litigation, you should take that opportunity. I advise clients only to sue somebody when it is absolutely necessary and unavoidable. Because being in a lawsuit is usually a bad experience for everybody involved, even if you win the lawsuit. It's sad, but true. It's just how our system works. And it's a very tough, long, expensive process. So how do you successfully navigate the pre-lawsuit stage where you are on the one hand trying to avoid a lawsuit and on the other hand trying to prepare yourself as best you can if you have to ultimately go into the actual lawsuit? One of the most common things you do in the pre-lawsuit stage of litigation is to write a demand letter. Maybe you are looking to sue somebody and you've had some dispute with them and you've hashed it out and you've talked to your blue in the face and you think, what's the good of more talking before I just sue? Well, sometimes it works really well to have your lawyer send uh, communication on your behalf because it's on attorney letterhead and just that fact alone shows that you are willing to pay an attorney to get involved and that you really mean business by virtue of the fact that you simply have a lawyer involved in the process now. And sometimes that's enough to get the other side to come to the table, be reasonable, and negotiate a solution without a lawsuit. So my point on that is that a demand letter can sometimes work without having to rush into the courtroom, try to negotiate, try to reach a settlement and a resolution for your dispute before you rush into the courtroom. The other thing you need to think about in the pre lawsuit stage of litigation is how best to prepare yourself for a lawsuit. So you want to gather all of your documents together. Maybe you make a timeline of the events that led to the lawsuit. All of the emails, all of the phone call, text message records, make sure you're preserving all of your evidence, whether it's written, whether it's electronic, make sure that you have all of it saved, backed up, and ready to go so that you can use it in the lawsuit. Okay, so that's the pre-lawsuit phase of litigation. Next is the pleading stage. Pleading means your complaint as the plaintiff and the answer uh, as the defendant. So in the pleading stage, you draft a complaint, which is a formal legal document. I suggest you have a lawyer do that for you. And the complaint lists out all of the main facts and it gives the other side notice about your legal basis for suing them. You list out all of the uh, legal claims, whether it's breach of contract or negligence or whatever that you are bringing against the other side. Now, at this point, I should mention that, as you know, I'm a Colorado licensed attorney, and a lot of this is based on litigation in Colorado. Our rules of civil procedure in Colorado, which govern the lawsuit process, are largely the same as the federal rules of civil procedure. So this process is similar whether you are in Colorado or in federal court or in some other jurisdiction that is based on the federal rules of civil procedure, but as always, make sure to consult a professional in your jurisdiction. So after you've drafted your complaint, you have to have a process server personally hand that to the person or an officer of the company that you are suing. That's called service of process. And then you file your lawsuit either online or at the courthouse with the court. And once you have filed your lawsuit and you have served the complaint upon the defendant, the lawsuit has begun. So also in that pleading stage, the defendant has to respond to the complaint. There are two main ways to respond to the complaint. The first is to do an answer. An answer is similar to a complaint. It matches it paragraph for paragraph. You have numbered paragraphs, 
where you go through and you line it up with the complaint and you say admit or deny for each factual allegation in the complaint. So it's like a mirror image of the complaint. That's called an answer. The other way you can respond to the complaint is by filing a motion to dismiss. So motions to dismiss are only useful if you have a legal basis or a purely legal argument for dismissing the lawsuit. If there is any factual dispute whatsoever, the motion to dismiss won't work. When a judge considers your motion to dismiss, he or she will look at it and say, okay, let me assume that all of the factual allegations in the complaint are true. Assuming all of that is true, is there a legal basis for this lawsuit to move forward? If so, your motion to dismiss will lose. But if assuming all the factual uh, allegations in the complaint are true, there is no legal basis for the lawsuit to move forward. Only then will your motion to dismiss be granted. Some common reasons for a motion to dismiss are failure to state a claim upon which relief can be granted, which means you don't have a legal claim supporting your facts, or lack of subject matter jurisdiction, lack of personal jurisdiction. Those things mean that the court doesn't have power over you or over the dispute. Uh, the, the court doesn't have jurisdiction or power to resolve that dispute. Those are a couple of examples of common motions to dismiss. So that's the pleading stage. Once you have completed the pleading stage, meaning you have filed an answer, maybe you've done counterclaims and the other side has answered your counterclaims. Once you have filed all of those pleadings, the pleading stage is completed. At that point, you will start to move into the discovery process. That's the next stage of a lawsuit. So before you begin that discovery process, you usually have a court conference. Here in Colorado, we often have things called case management conferences, where one side's lawyers and the other side's lawyers go through and propose all the logistical housekeeping matters for the lawsuit. How much discovery are we going to do? How many depositions? How many written questions can we ask each other? Uh, what are our deadlines going to be throughout this lawsuit? How many days do we think we need for trial? All of those logistical items. We put those in a proposed case management order and we submit it to the court. And then often judges bring us into the courtroom, both sides, lawyers, and we just work through all those housekeeping matters together in what's called a case management conference. The result of that conference is usually that the judge enters the case management order and it's official, you're off to the races to begin discovery. Discovery is the process where each party in a lawsuit learns about what evidence the other side has. So there is written discovery and there is oral discovery. Written discovery consists of interrogatories, requests for production, and requests for admission. So the lawyer for one side will write a bunch of questions to the other side. Where were you on the night of the 13th? That's called an interrogatory, those sorts of written questions. That same lawyer will uh, write requests for documents. Produce all email communications you had with John Doe. That is a request for production. That same lawyer will do requests for admission. Admit that all the documents I've provided you are accurate. Those are requests for admission. So interrogatories, requests for production, and requests for admission are what we call written discovery. In Colorado, you have 35 days to respond to those written discovery requests once you receive them from the other side. The other type of discovery is oral discovery. What we are referring to when we say oral discovery is depositions. A deposition is just like testifying in court, except you do it in advance, you do it under oath, and you do it usually in a conference room. You've probably seen videos on YouTube of depositions. There are a lot of famous depositions throughout history involving celebrity lawsuits and whatnot. Sometimes they're videotaped. Sometimes there's just a court reporter there 
taking a transcript of what happens and there's no videotape. Very frequently, parties to a lawsuit have to do a deposition where they give testimony sworn under oath. And then they also have to appear at trial if the case goes that far and testify in the actual courtroom. So it's not an either or type of thing. Now, with all of this written and oral discovery, keep in mind that one side in a lawsuit can ask the other side for documents and depositions and whatnot, but there's also something called a subpoena where either party in the lawsuit can ask a third party for documents or a deposition. Now, keep in mind, throughout this entire process of the lawsuit, as legal fees are piling up for both sides, you can resolve the lawsuit by agreement at any time. You can go into mediation where you voluntarily agree to reach a settlement, and the vast majority of lawsuits do settle before trial. We go into more detail about mediation on the video about mediation in the same playlist. So after you've gone through the pleading stage and the discovery stage, now you're ready for pre-trial motions. The most common type of pre-trial motion is a motion for summary judgment. It is similar to a motion to dismiss in that it's really about the law in the case, not the facts in the case. If there's a dispute over what happened, the motion for summary judgment probably will not be granted. The technical language is that a motion for summary judgment can be granted to dismiss the lawsuit when there is no genuine issue of material fact. So in other words, assuming that everything the plaintiff says is true, for legal reasons, this lawsuit has to be dismissed and the court can enter summary judgment, meaning entering judgment before trial happens. Another really common type of pretrial motion is a motion in limine. People pronounce it differently. Motion in limine, motion in limine, however you want to say it, L-I-M-I-N-E. Anyway, what that is, is it's a motion for an evidentiary ruling before trial happens. So in trial, when you see people saying, I object, that's hearsay, etc., you can actually file a motion before trial to say, we want to exclude any of this type of evidence because it is you know, hearsay or violates some other rule of evidence. So that's a common type of pretrial motion. Even though it seems like we're down in the weeds on that, those are actually really important and oftentimes cases are won and lost on motions in limine. So those are the pretrial motions. The next phase of the lawsuit is what most people think of as the entire lawsuit, which is trial. You all know what trial is. You've seen it on TV. There's the courtroom. There's all that marble. There's the judge sitting up at a really high bench. Everybody's in suits. I object. You can't handle the truth. All of that, I don't really need to explain to you what a trial is. It might seem strange to talk so much about the pre-litigation process and then kind of gloss over trials, but the fact is most of the fees you pay in the lawsuit process and most of the activity that takes place is actually done well before trial. After your trial is the post-trial process. So sometimes you'll have post-trial motions like, oh no, we lost the jury trial, judge, Will you enter an order notwithstanding the verdict that we win anyway? That's an example of a post-trial motion. Another thing you'll have, very commonly known, is an appeal. If you lose your trial, you typically can't appeal to the Court of Appeals just because you don't like the factual findings of the jury. You, you think different witnesses were credible than they thought were credible or something like that. Just like with a motion to dismiss or a motion for summary judgment, you need an actual legal reason for doing it. So there has to have been some legal defect in the trial in order for you to successfully appeal by and large. So that's the post-trial and appeals process. And of course, there's more that can be said about appeals. People spend their entire careers doing appeals, but that gives the general idea, the general overview of the post-trial and appeals process. So those are the stages of a lawsuit all the way from trying to avoid a lawsuit, trying to prepare for a lawsuit, going through the stages of, of the lawsuit, all the way through trial and beyond. We'll talk more in depth about some of those stages in the other videos in this playlist, as I mentioned, but thanks for watching this one, and please remember to click like and subscribe to help keep legal education accessible.
for small business owners. Mm -hmm.